Look, sir, please grant uh, grant him permission. He is trying to join. Okay. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think so. You work, sir? Yeah. The good thing, sir. Permission, good thing, sir. Ah, yes. He has arrived. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, sir. Professor, is it audible, sir? Uh, sir, we will. Uh, yes, sir. Sir, I think your your voice is uh, muted, sir. Uh, no, no, sir. No, sir. No, sir, your voice is uh, audible, sir. Deepak, sir, sir, the voice is coming. No, no, no. I am hearing. Ah, yes, yeah. sir. Ah, now, yeah. Yeah, now it's audible. Now it's audible, sir. Now it's audible. Yes, sir. Sir, uh, please. Uh, yes, sir. I think uh, all the students have come. Now uh, it's okay, now. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's okay. Sir. And. If there is any dis disruption in my talk due to the the uh, broadband connection being stopped or any other technical uh, defect on my side, please tell me immediately. Please point. Yes. Please send, please send a message or call me over the phone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. Okay. Because I, I I I won't know whether all the students are connected. So if there is a, you will yes, use you faculty members should uh, follow yes, it sir. and uh, check and tell me if there is any disruption yes sir sure yeah. sir sure sir, sure, sir. Thank we you, will sir. do that okay yes sir sure. so we will start in another one who, or two who is the other person deepak nine. deepak yes, yes sir deepak sir. deepak, deepak uh. Uh, yes sir i yes. will be able to see at least some of you or uh, no huh? yes sir yes sir no sir we have uh, yeah i think most of the students are turning on their video Ah. So please uh, uh, keep your uh, uh, video on. No, for example, uh, is it uh, Nayakam and Deepak? Deepak, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I am coming, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. He is coming. Yes, Shambhu Priya, ma'am, are you there? Shambhu Priya, ma'am. Amrita, sir. Amrita will not be joined, sir. She is undergoing on uh, some treatment, so for the past three weeks. Okay. okay. So she, she will not be there. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, Deepak, shall we uh, Deepak, sir. Okay, sir. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, your uh, principal is uh, available yes, or not? Sir. No, sir. He said he has some meeting with the university. Okay. 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 Very good. So he called me today morning and he has just uh, he said apologized for that. Okay. Yes, no, sir. No, no. It's okay. So, yes, sir. So, yes, we'll, sir. we'll start the program? Yes, sir. Shall we start, sir? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. Yes, sir. So, uh, very good morning to one and all present here. Uh, on behalf of uh, the Department of Criminology, DG Vaishnava College, I extend my grant, uh, extend my uh, warm uh, welcome and gratitude to uh, Dr. Uh, Professor K. Chukalingam sir. So he is a legend uh, in the subject criminology. Uh, so today, as a part of our uh, lecture series, uh, 
Vikram. So he should be the he should have been the opener, but now he has come as the finisher of the game. So uh, in that uh, uh, he had, uh, despite some health issues, uh, um, I uh, yesterday I called one week before I told no sir you have to give us a lecture. So we, our students uh, we badly need you to talk to us at least for 45 minutes to one hour. So he said, okay, Michael, because of your perseverance, uh, I am uh, I am I am accepting your invitation, and he has uh, graciously uh, come uh, uh, come and join with us today. So thank you so much uh, for accepting our invitation, sir. So we have uh, students uh, for all the first year, second year, and third year students. So the Google Classroom uh, capacity, we can accommodate only 100 students in the Google Classroom. And the remaining students are watching through the YouTube. Uh, it, it is being live streamed uh, in the YouTube. So the remaining students are watching through YouTube, sir. Uh, so on the, uh, once again, I welcome uh, Professor Dr. K. Chokalingam, sir, uh, for this uh, wonderful presentation. To interact with our students. So uh, to, to begin with the program, I want to introduce uh, Professor K. Chapulingham, sir. So uh, we all, uh, uh, we, we all uh, you uh, students, you may not aware that who uh, Professor Chapulingham, sir, is. So let me give you a, a small example. So he, in one word, you know, if you want me to introduce him in one word, I can say that he is a man of integrity. He is a man of integrity. So that is a one word, everything will come uh, under that. So we are learning criminology. It is only because of the great man he is with us. And he is the one who uh, established the Department of uh, Criminology in the state of Tamil Nadu. And he is almost, uh, no, he, we can call him as the father of uh, criminology in the state of Tamil Nadu. And we can call him as the father of victimology in the state of India, the entire country. So he is a pioneering and victimologist. And I can give him his academic credentials and what he has done so far. Uh, for us, the CV, right? You know, never for a job, we used to prepare a curriculum detail. So for us, we will we'll not add not more than two to three pages. For academic people, maybe five to six pages. So for his uh, capacity, he has a CV of 66 pages. All the 66 pages, so he has worked uh, all the 40, he has uh, 40 of uh, both teaching and research as well as administrative experience his brief cv itself comes six pages so which if, if i you know it will take around 10 to 15 minutes to read out the entire cv so i think this is uh, you know we are very fortunate to uh, live in his period so we are very proud to have you sir and he has been uh, he is the founding head of the department of the department of criminology the university of Trust, and he became the vice chancellor of uh, Manohar Munir Sudhana University, Tirunal Valley. And he again established the Department of Criminology in the Embassy University. And because of him, uh, almost uh, we all are learning criminology because of him. So he is the one. He just uh, succeeded, and we all are grown up now. So he is very happy to see the development of criminology also. And uh, apart from that, he's also, uh, uh, he has been visited almost 40 countries. And he has taken he has taken part in as uh, almost dozens of uh, United Nations uh, initiatives, and he was uh, part of part and uh, uh, you know he has a member in UN uh, bodies, and he was expert in UN uh, various committees, and he was also uh, served as a visiting professor uh, professor emeritus in the Tokyo uh, International University as well as in the National Law University uh, Delhi. Also, he served uh, some two to three years. So he has a, a wide experience, and, uh, and I think I, I have no uh, right to introduce him in this forum. But still, being a student of uh, him, so I am very happy and very glad to introduce sir. So we are uh, very happy. But Professor Nalichi, in the matter of Professor Yerna, we are we are learning Caesar Beccaria, Benjamin Mendelssohn, and all those people. We are learning in the books, right? So probably in another five, ten years, uh, Professor Chaplingham is also will be there in the books. Right, so he will. He has contributed that much to the uh, subject of criminology as well as the victimology, and uh, he has held various several other position. And even now, at the age of, uh, he is almost eighty. No, professor, he's almost 76, 76. 76, 76. Yeah. Now he is heading the the Rajiv Gandhi uh, uh, Institute of uh, Youth Development, which is held in uh, which is there in Sri Barmudu, the central government uh, body, and he is a chairperson there. So, Chancellor in the sense, it is above Vice Chancellor, he is almost equal to Chancellor. So, he is still at the age of 77, he is working, he is working, and he is working. And he has that much of 
dedication towards uh, the department and he has much passion towards the people and and he whenever whatever helps we are asking him he never said no okay whatever the legitimate way whatever we are asking he will immediately support us full fledged he will support us so that that kind of uh, the person and the legend he is so we, I, I i extend my sincere uh, thankful and heartful welcome to you sir thank you so much sir you have been my uh, mentor in the last five ten years i have been seeing you once i have joined in the department of criminology i have been watching you and we are you are our uh, role model so whatever works we are doing your work exactly writing in our even it can be writing a letter writing an article organizing a program and it can be anything uh, we are all we are following your model sir so thank you so much for being a model for us so so today i on behalf of the department of technology and dg vaishnav college i extend a great welcome to professor k chopalingam sir so thank you so much for being with us sir as a part of uh, this lecture series program uh, we have a desire to uh, release a department a newsletter So now I first shall go to Aman to uh, talk a few words about the newsletter, so that the Professor Chopping himself will release the newsletter. Thank you. Thank you, sir. A uh, very good morning to our chief guest, Dr. Chokalingam sir. I am Shanmugam Priya, the faculty in charge for newsletter, and I am here to give a short intro about our newsletter. Newsletter is an array of timeline of activities of an institution or department. which is circulated among its fellow members and any other community connected there to speaking of which we now have our very own newsletter first edition newsletter the quester which gives us an overall brief idea of our institution and department as well the newsletter includes various activities conducted by the department to bring out the efficiency of the students to limelight it also has a separate column for showcasing students talents on their skills and keep it more interesting it includes puzzles and riddles as well i take this opportunity to thank our students community who are part of newsletter team who relentlessly work towards the perfection of the newsletter and a special thanks to our beloved head of the department and chief editor dr amrita karayal for making it look impeccably outstanding it gave me an immense pride to get a criminology department newsletter released by the father of criminology in the state of tamil nadu i now humbly request our chief guest dr chukkalingam sir to virtually release our first edition newsletter the quester yes thank you yes sir so now i you can go at the right end present now shall i click it Yes, sir. Okay. Once you present, you once you click the present button, then it will ask for yeah. uh, your, your entire screen, your window, uh, and tab. So please click a window. Window. Yes, sir. If you click a window, options will come. It will appear. Like which window you want to share. Uh, Michael, sir, please ask Professor to. Uh, Keep the document open already, like a PDF document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's open. Yeah. I, I have yeah. already, I have already open. downloaded and saved in the desktop. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. No, please Andrew, open. Uh, please open I, that. I should uh, open it, huh? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. yes, sir. yes sir. One, one open that document, and then you can uh, use that document as a window. Ah. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Then you can, if you click the present button, then it will automatically go. You can choose which window. If you click that button, then it will appear. You please open the PDF file, sir. Yeah, I have opened it now. Should I keep yes. it uh, in minimize minimize yes. it or yeah, minimize? Yeah. yeah, minimize it. Okay, yeah. minimize now, it. Now you please uh, go back to your Google Classroom. Yeah. Now I have come to Google Meet. Google ah. Meet. Yeah, please Google press Meet. the button present. Uh, one second. One second. Present now. Yes, a window. It takes a little time. Yeah, no problem, sir. No problem, sir. Ah, Chrome wants to share the contents of your screen with me to Google.com. Choose what you would like to share. 
uh, no. don't don't uh, share the entire screen professor just share only no but uh, uh, yeah it is the, yes yes you please choose uh, that that uh, some or or peri box appear there irukum adle rendu moonu screen irukum adle illengla and the newsletter irukku paarenga illa share nu irukku share click pannuva ah yes share click pannunga sir yes no but it doesn't uh, the cursor doesn't click it so you have to choose any one of the window no sir and the window is on and the box la irukum paarenga adha vandu ungala rendu moonu window open a irukum you want me to redo it cancel and redo it or uh, no sir if you any on the present button press panninga illaya ama adha press panna odna ya window varudhingala adha illa modalla vandudhu appra na ipa i went to the desktop okay, and please do that again sir that will come uh, please do that again so then uh, usually it takes time uh, so the, it takes time i I'll, okay. i'll cancel it uh. yes sir uh, now i will go to uh, present now Yes, sir. And ask a window. Ah, window, right? Yes, sir. All, all that three options. That the box is full. The display is there. You can see what window is there. Like, you can see the whole thing. You can see the whole thing. You can see the whole thing. Is that video file is visible in that? Like, Chrome want to share that uh, letter here. Uh, Michael sir, if not, he can share the entire window, sir. And uh, sometimes PDF may not appear. Okay. If the PDF uh, uh, yes. in the in the scrolling uh, place. Yes, sir. Uh, if I click it, will it come? No. Yes, sir. Uh, no, in the window itself, sir. Ill, never. Yes, sir. Uh, okay. Uh, Michael sir, not, we shall please ask him to present the entire uh, entire screen, sir. Yes. Then again, then I, he I can open the PDF. Yes, can cancel for it, for now. Yes, sir. Cancel for it, sir. Present you will present now. Go it. You just give yeah. the screen. Present now. Yes, sir. Win window la entire screen. Yes, sir. Entire screen. Sorry. The entire screen. I am not able to. It is in a very very small letters. I am not able to see it. Okay. Uh, okay. 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 Then you leave it, sir. We will leave it, sir. We will what we will do. Uh, we will just share it so you can uh, just go through it and. Yeah. I I think I I have, I have already seen your uh, newsletter and uh, yes. it is the first issue of, of your newsletter. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. it's the first issue of. Newsletter. Oh. Okay. Okay. Fantastic. right yes sir so then yes now you can you can presume that uh, i i have released it so so i i would go ahead yes sir because i am not it, able to yes, lo sir. locate it yes, exactly sir. yeah uh, yes, maybe sir. it takes time now it is opening yes sir yes sir i think it is opening yes sir no, yes sir it has um, come sir no sir it has come, come sir. it is appearing yeah yes sir yes sir oh so my young friends i am extremely happy to to release your first maiden attempt of uh, the producing a newsletter for your department of criminology and police administration and wow it is it is uh, incredible that uh, young students and uh, your faculty are uh doing some great things just like a university department so my congratulations to all of you all uh, the faculty members the head of the department uh, and uh, dr amrutha kare uh, dr michael valan yes. and uh, deepak and uh, shanbuga priya and all your senior students who are assisting uh I think now now it is coming up, you know, it is rolling. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So shall I 
now cancel yes, or close it or yes yes sir yes sir we'll we'll go cancel it sir yes okay now yes, i am sir. coming to the main screen correct yes yes sir yes sir yeah yeah, yeah. so yes sir. yes sir so thank you so much sir <laughs> so <laughs> yes sir so my uh, young friends uh, dr mike k valan the faculty member and coordinator of this program uh, dr deepak and uh, i am not uh, able to see i heard that uh, dr karail is uh, on leave or he is not taking part in this because of her some personal engagement personal commitment and uh, dr sanmuga priya and other faculty members and my dear students i am very excited to see the activities the fantastic activities of the department of police administration criminology and police administration of uh, the dg vaishnava college i i am unable to believe that uh, a young college young department of a college uh, is able to do all these things a few years ago i don't remember the exact year i think around 2017 or so and michael valan uh, michael uh, sent uh, yes, sent a mail sir. meant uh, sent a mail to me asking me whether he can call me i, I was really surprised uh, because uh, they were they were so trained so uh, meticulously well about uh, the courtesy and uh, i asked yes immediately you can, you i sent a mail reply that you can call me immediately then he called me with a little hesitation and uh, i put him in order and i said that uh, uh, you are our student criminology fraternity you have the freedom to call me and ask me anything so then he said that uh, they he has he is planning he and along with other faculty members is planning to organize an international conference and uh, in the college i think at that time the department was about 2 years old or 1 year old uh, just 2 years sir 2017 yes sir so yes, sir. within 2 years uh, the department was thinking of uh, department of the college is think was thinking about organizing such a an international conference on uh, criminology and victimology maybe mainly focusing on victimology and he asked me to uh, to deliver a, uh, i think a keynote address uh, and i gladly agreed and when i when i visited the college uh, the arrangements and uh, it was a maiden attempt but uh, it doesn't it didn't really look like a maiden attempt it was a very well organized uh, uh, conference and uh, he could also manage to get uh, some of the key figures uh, my friend the german professor professor kirshoff who came from new delhi at that time he was in the he was working in the op jindal global university as a professor of victimology he came and then <clears throat> i think others uh, including uh, professor edna rs from us yeah. uh, professor edna rs from <laughs> united states yes george richards ha and george dr george richards from united yeah, states yeah dr george correct correct and uh, i was um, at that time my my admiration to uh, dr michael and uh, the faculty members of the department of criminology of wisdom college went so high that uh, you were you were having the courage and confidence to organize such an important conference in a college and uh, the commitment the passion all these things i liked it and and i i thank uh, dr michael for his very kind words of introduction yes, and yes, i do not know but uh, in the last 50 years uh, if at all i am proud of uh, doing something i think i have i have uh, induced the younger generation to observe uh, character and integrity along with criminology i used to say that uh, criminology can be learned from books for which there is no need for a teacher but uh, 
for instilling confidence and instilling on character on integrity on the individuals you need a role model you have to i had also role models i had my role model justice krishna here was my role model professor n r madhav menon was my role model and several others from whom i was very fortunate to be in association with all these people when they were for example krishna here was about 25 30 years elder to me but uh, we i had the opportunity to move with him and also uh, work with him involve him in all our activities i think my association with justice krishna yes was um, i think more than 45 years so uh, the the all these things uh, i think uh, give you a lot of enthusiasm and courage and uh, passion to work in the field now coming to the, the part the, today's uh, assignment given to me by uh, dr michael uh, before that i would like to uh, thank your principal uh, dr i think santosh babu and i know dr santosh babu very well because uh, he was uh, the registrar Sundarnar University for for I think three four years and uh, at that time I had participated in some of the events important events in the Manonmani of Sundarnar University on the invitation of uh, one of my earliest students uh, Professor Bula Shaker who was um, heading the Department of Criminology in Manonmani of Sundarnar University so Dr Santosh Babu was a very very a committed enthusiastic uh, official as a registrar and he managed the university affairs very well so since that time i know him very well and i'm very happy that uh, uh, dr santosh babu is uh, giving all support and encouragement to the department of criminology and police administration to uh, venture in all these activities and i'm extremely happy that uh, the two assignments which uh, uh, dr michael asked me to do is one is uh, to uh, to release the newsletter which i have done very happily and i congratulate the faculty members for doing this and uh, this will uh, give a lot of training opportunities for the students because you should also involve students in these activities and then second thing he wanted me to inaugurate the the lecture series of this year i i do not know whether the lecture activities have already been commenced because uh, this program my my talk my lecture was supposed to be done on 20th of march about a couple of weeks before but at that time i had some problem with my throat and uh, i could not um, speak so i postponed i i request uh, i requested uh, dr michael whether it could be postponed because i was feeling very uncomfortable to speak so he said it would be fine there is no problem sir and i really appreciate uh, his perseverance he did not leave me at all he he used to call me uh, about um, inquiring about my health how was it and uh, am i better and then then he asked me, I think about two, three days before, whether we can have the, the postponed lecture program today. That is Saturday, 3rd, March, 3rd April. I said, I am very fine. We can have it differently. So I, I congratulate Dr. Michael for his perseverance and his involving me in this uh, program i'm very very happy to involve yes, in activities you, activities of your colleagues and i'm extremely happy to see the other uh, uh, faculties like though i have i don't remember i don't know whether i met dr deepak uh, when i visited your college at that time you were working there whether i yes sir i were working there no. we met Ah, oh, very good, very good. You see, yes, you, you should blame me for my, my losing memory. Maybe I'm not able to remember all the people, but I met many, many people there. I'm extremely happy that uh, uh, you you were the student of my student, Professor Ramadas, no? Dr. Ramadas. Yes, sir. Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Very good. Very good. So 
it, I, I'm really excited to talk to, to address the, the third generation of students. You know, the teachers of all the teachers under whom you have worked for your PhD, you have attended your classes, uh, where my students about 30 years ago, 40 years ago. Now, I'm extremely happy that uh, the departments of criminology in the University of Madras and also the Manon Muni of Sundarnath University have been filled with uh, the faculty members who were all very brilliant people, the students of mine in the University of Madras several uh, years ago. Now, and this uh, talk of me is something different and unusual uh, because the title of it is Dr. Michael said that, uh, sir, uh, we would like you to talk on your journey as a criminologist and victimologist. So uh, I, I never uh, thought of uh, giving such a lecture to the students uh, on my own journey. So it was a it was almost like uh, after after Michael asked me to to uh, get into the memory lane of my journey as a criminologist and victimologist, uh, I was tracking, I was uh, uh, introspecting and recapitulating the long journey of 50 years, long journey of really 50 years, because I started as a student. Uh, uh, of, of, of research in the in the year 1969, I was a I was a research scholar in the University of Madras uh, Department of Psychology in the year 1969. So 69 means it is now more than I think 52 years, around 52 years. So it is fifth, more than 50 years. Uh, the the amount of work we have done, the the various tasks we have completed the various assignments and landmark uh, contributions made in uh, the field of criminology and victimology really gives me immense satisfaction. And I am also extremely happy that uh, we could produce, the Department of Criminology of Madras University could produce several brilliant students uh, who are all in different walks of life. They are working in different fields, and some of them as uh, teachers, uh, including the faculty members of uh, your college, the DG Vaishnava College, where some of our some of our very brilliant students are working as faculty members. Um, what else is needed? What else is the aspiration of a teacher than to see the students, his own students, are the 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 students of the second and third generation when they are doing extremely well and nothing is more dear than this to the teacher so i really congratulate all of you for that so uh, so michael's request was to, to talk about uh, uh, my journey as a criminologist and victimologist in our country Uh, Michael told me that uh, you have students. Um, it's a heterogeneous group of students. Heterogeneous group of students means uh, some students are maybe the lucky, fortunate ones who had studied in good schools and good colleges, maybe good uh, institutions, and uh, maybe uh, in English medium, which probably uh, helped them to understand the the lectures. Uh, more easily than the uh, other students who had not who particularly coming from rural areas who could not and i want to assure all of you all of you and i want to uh, keep you in relaxed condition that uh, i also studied in a tamil medium school about uh, maybe about 60 years ago and uh, all these things i equipped myself by very hard work. When I entered into the college, uh, after my, uh, those days it was the 11th, there was no 12th. So after the 11th, 
uh, the examination that is school final board examination when i went to the college for several months for a few months i did not understand anything when the teacher when the lecturers spoke about it but uh, i would to, due to lack of time i'm not going into the details of it but i would tell you the same person who struggled to understand the english lectures in uh, in the in the beginning of my uh, college days beginning of my first part of my college days uh, could lecture in oxford university and harvard university after about 30 40 years so i want you to not to feel uh, uh, um, inferior or difficult shy that you are not able to follow uh, the english english is not our language after all it is a foreign language so anything but anything if you practice it if you take a, a real interest to learn it then it it would not be difficult at all so but in any case i remember those days when I was uh, teaching in the Madras University Department of Criminology, that I also had some students uh, coming from rural, rural areas. So for their benefit, I always uh, used to tell the, it, you know, my class was more or less like bilingual. So I used to teach both in Tamil and English for the benefit of students uh, who could not follow English alone. If I, particularly when I was teaching criminal law, the the nuances and the finer points of the provisions of criminal law particularly when you are talking about uh, the intention particularly when you are uh, for example when you are talking about the difference between section 299 and 300 of ipc that is uh, uh, culpable homicide not amounting to murder and also murder so there is a lot of uh, uh, um, very finer difference between these two because in both these uh, cases 299 and 3 300 the consequence is same but in both the cases the person dies but the the criminal law treats the indian penal code treats both these sections uh, entirely different on the basis of the intent, the intention, the mens rea, to call it the students of criminal law and uh, the criminology, you must have perhaps, I think third year students, at least third year, second year students uh, would have studied about uh, the mens rea, mens rea, criminal intention. So the criminal intention, the, the strength of criminal intention is most important in deciding whether the act is murder or Homicide not amounting to murder. Both are criminal acts, but as far as punishment is concerned, there is a lot of difference between these two because of the intention. So, uh, whenever there is any difficulty, or whenever I think that these are technical things which I should talk to you, both in English and in Tamil, I would always do that. And you have the freedom to to inter in, intervene also whenever you think that it is uh, not uh, you are not able to understand it you have the full freedom to intervene and ask me there is no problem at all so, so now coming to the the uh, my journey as a, a criminologist and victimologist victimologist i think it is almost like a storytelling michael wanted me to tell me tell all of you about my story uh, of course my story cannot be delinked from criminology my story is always with uh, criminology and victimology is it not it is not uh, the story of a person who has no connection with criminology and victimology all the time all the last 50 years uh, my work was connecting with linking with criminology and victimology so it is not simply a personal story of a life story of a person but a story of a person a story of a teacher whose connections with criminology and victimology are very strong for the last 50 years and 
I would like to uh, inform uh, some of the students who had no uh, knowledge about uh, this particular article. Uh, Michael knows about it because Michael, maybe Michael was impressed with that article. That's why he asked me to speak on my uh, journey as a criminologist and victimologist. That uh, article for the, our uh, younger students, I would like to uh, tell uh, all of you that the article is titled as uh, some random thoughts about victimological movement in the world with special reference to India. It was published in the first issue of the newly started journal of victimology and victim justice. Victimology and victim justice was a newly started journal due to the efforts of uh, the current president of Indian Society of Victimology, Professor Bajpai, who is a professor of uh, law, criminology and criminal law at the National Law University, Delhi. Now, he really persuaded me. I did not think of writing this piece, but he called me and he persuaded me to because he said that uh, the first issue of victimology should not go without your article, sir. You are the founder of the Indian Society of Victimology. So I am so keen that uh, you should make a contribution. And uh, that made me to write this article on some random thoughts about victimological movement in the world. There, though I was, the title is uh, some random thoughts about victimological movement, but it is almost like a, like a, uh, tracing the evolution of criminology and victimology in India. It is like almost tracing the evolution of criminology and victimology in India. So I am uh, so happy to share about this uh, public uh, publication so that those students who want to uh, read this article in detail can go it. Now, criminology is a very fascinating and exciting field of study as it deals with a particular aspect of human behavior, namely deviant behavior. Criminology is the study of deviant behavior. Now, all deviant behaviors are not crimes. But all crimes are deviant behavior. This I used to tell in my class those days. There are deviant behaviors. Deviant behaviors are the behaviors which are not acceptable to the society. The society has not approved this behavior. Some of the behaviors are, for example, telling a lie, disrespecting the elders. Now, these are all behaviors which are not uh, palatable, which are not acceptable by the elders, by your parents, by your teachers. But they are not crimes. Though it is a deviant behavior from the accepted and established norms of the society, customs of the society, these are not crimes. But when the when such deviant behaviors become serious, affecting the entire fabric of the society, then it is called, it is designated as crime. So that is why I use the phrase, I use the sentence that uh, all deviant behaviors are crime. Uh, sorry, all criminal behaviors are deviant behaviors, but not the vice versa. As, as I gave the example that uh, uh, telling truth, uh, uh, but respecting the elders and teachers, etc. Now, these are all the desirable and expected behaviors. But if one violates it, he cannot be punished for it. So the most important ingredient for calling an act as a conduct as a crime is it should be punishable under the criminal law. The behaviors which I mentioned just a minute before as morally unacceptable behaviors, they are not crimes because they cannot be punished under the criminal law. So criminology is a really most exciting subject because it explores and it goes into the deep root and the causation of crime. Why do people commit crime? Is it not fascinating to know? To, because all of us know 
that uh, certain acts are prohibited by those certain my, uh, the, the certain acts which are not so so serious they are in the borderline people may not know whether it is a crime or not but uh, the acts which have been totally prohibited in all the societies of the world all countries of the world take for example murder rape causing grievous hurt or injury now these are unacceptable and criminal behaviors in all societies whether it is in advanced society developed society whether it is in the democratic society or the <coughs> Uh, the societies autocratic society in all these societies certain acts which are totally unacceptable and which will affect the the the, the society's fabric that is uh, called crime so why do people commit crime because even the criminal who has committed murder he knows that it is against law but still he does it why is it not something very fascinating to know and to go into the causes of it so causation of crime etiology of criminal behavior which was made which was, which was uh, the, the 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 underpin the most important underpin of uh, the uh, study of criminology if you ask me as it as uh, the the title is that uh, my journey if you ask me whether I have chosen criminology out of my choice, out of my liking. My answer is no, not at all. I did not know when I joined criminology about uh, what it is dealing with. If you ask me, I have never told this in any, there was no occasion for me to tell except my own family members. I wanted to study medicine. Would be As a student of biology, I was a, a student of biological science. I studied a degree in zoology and botany. So I wanted to um, go for medicine and I could not succeed in getting medicine. But at that time, immediately, then I joined as a teacher in the, in, as a tutor, as a demonstrator in, in a government college those days. And uh, at that time, immediately after two or three months of my unsuccessful attempt to get into medical college, Madras Medical College, at that time, within two or three months and that means after joining for just three months and and as a teacher in a government college at Poneri, i remember it was in 1960 uh, um, i think 65 1965 so at that time within the, within two or three months uh, in september uh, i think august uh, yeah, to july or august uh, the advertisement came from the Madras Medical College, Madras Medical College, that uh, in the, the newly started MA degree course in criminology and forensic science, uh, they are inviting applications. So I was an applicant because I thought, because I was a student uh, aspiring to study in medical college and this advertisement for a postgraduate course also came from a medical college. I applied without any knowledge about what criminology is. Now, these days, all of you, because of your the Google facility, internet facility, even the very, very young students, school students, they are able to know everything. The, the knowledge is so vast, it is available very freely. But those days, it was not like that. So I applied for it. And I think out of more than 100 students, they selected only six students the admission is only for six students so uh, i was one among the six students selected for this master's degree in criminology and forensic science Cr those days the course was called criminology and forensic science that was master's degree taught in madras medical college i was uh, a student of madras medical college for two years and i stayed in the madras medical college hostel in i think uh, near paris corner you know that uh, madras medical college um, at, at least the teachers and people who are students who are uh, belonging to chennai city they would know so in that hostel only uh, we were the students of uh, criminology also studied there and, uh, and though the only subject which was taught in the madras medical college was forensic medicine the professor of forensic medicine was our 
professor in charge. No other subject was available in Madras Medical College. You can, it is very obvious you can understand that because it's a medical college. So we had all the subjects taught by the departmental experts. For example, forensic science was taught by the the uh, forensic science laboratory director, the additional director, deputy director, assistant director. We used to go and attend the classes there. Then police administration, investigation, etc. was taught by police officers, the IG of police. Uh, we had, I remember uh, 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 my teacher who who died about three, four years before. He he was uh, he retired as the inspector general of police, one Mr. R. N. Manikam. So we attended, we used to attend his class in the evening after 5.30 or 6, 6 o'clock because he was free from his uh, routine duties, important duties, governmental duties at that time. So we used to really think very proud of us and we enjoyed attending all these classes uh, with uh, our uh, uh, the police officers in the IG's office and um, the psychology of crime and sociology of crime these two subjects were taught in the department of psychology of the university of madras that is why we had a closer link with the psychology department because that is the academic department which showed interest and which is closely connected to criminology so and my mentor and my teacher my professor professor t shanmugam was the head of the department and he is the person responsible later after about 10 years he was he when the madras medical college relieved criminology courses from uh, its uh, uh, portal the uh, professor t shanmugam came for the rescue and he said he, he would be happy to house criminology course along with the psychology course in the in the madras university psychology department otherwise at that time if he had refused it probably criminology would have been completely closed the things would have been completely different you won't be, I won't be talking to you, talking to you as a, as a criminology teacher. And all these developments of uh, many colleges and many universities starting criminology would not have happened at all. So I take this uh, opportunity and take this occasion to pay my, pay my heartfelt homage to the late Professor T. Shanmugam, my mentor, for having been generous to accommodate the subject of criminology and that that person was instrumental later on to recommend to the university grants commission to create an independent department of criminology in the university of madras and the recommendation was done to a high level committee under the justice uh, uh, judge of the madras high court justice nadrajan who later retired as the judge of the supreme court of india so the university grants commission listen to uh, the the ideas the recommendation of this high level committee and sanctioned the department of criminology and criminology department came into existence in 1983 by the time i completed my phd and i was selected by the union public service commission as a, as a uh, uh, lecturer in the national institute of social defense and uh, that gave me a very wide opportunity to travel all over the country to visit all the states in india i have visited almost all the capitals of different states in india organizing training programs for judicial officers police officers correctional officers probation officers and about uh, it's a it mostly it's a two weeks course sometimes one week uh, in service training program uh, uh, familiarizing them with the latest developments uh, and also the motto the 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 purpose of uh, 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 the corrections why the crim criminology is important for these criminal justice officer officers uh, to know because uh, the the ideology has changed from retribution to reformation now students of uh, criminology would understand that uh, once upon a time now at least about 150 years ago or 200 years ago the punishment was given only for only as a retributory measure that is uh, eye for an eye tooth for a tooth principle that is to 
to retaliate the offender for what he has done the the punishment was given but later on due to the advent of new knowledge in criminology due, due to the new knowledge in penology penological studies now then they said that the criminal behavior is learned you would remember probably you would remember the theory of uh, sociological theories and one of the very top theories is the differential association theory of sutherland and uh, in that theory he was telling that criminal behavior is a learned behavior that means uh, he exploded completely he put a full stop to the the uh, scientific thinking of uh, uh, caesar lombroso that criminal is born is a criminal is born lombroso but uh, sociological theory said no criminal is made no criminal is born it's all making uh, people are made due to the bad circumstances i remember one of the uh, anecdotes given by one of my teachers about again 50 years ago one dig of presence his name is mr epd thomas epd thomas he was telling that in in our class because we were attending his classes for prison administration and correctional administration he was a very brilliant honest officer and he was telling that uh, we see all of you think that uh, the that jails or uh, uh, prisons contain very dangerous people he said it is completely untrue the most of the prisoners in the prisons are not dangerous at all they are all people who have become offenders due to circumstances only very few are uh, little dangerous people or people who have committed some crimes which are dangerous but otherwise majority of the offenders who have committed crimes and come as prisoners punished convicted and punished by the court are normal people in fact he was very uh, humorously telling that uh, much more dangerous people are free in the society outside the prisons they are all to be inside but uh, they cannot be convicted because their crimes cannot be proved so and he i remember the anecdote which he told that uh, that uh, uh, to to prove the sociological theory that criminal is made and not born he was telling that uh, once father jos saw father jos a christian uh, priest was walking and he saw a person who was uh, taken to gallows you know gallows for executing for uh, executing death penalty he was taken to the gallows and he saw it and uh, he was telling him within himself that uh, but for the grace of jesus father those would also or would also have gone to the gallows but for the please remember the words but for the grace of jesus but for the grace of jesus you may say jesus or allah or god but for the grace of god father jose would have also gone to the gallows that means if i had not been benevolent with the the grace of god through very good parents affectionate parents very good school very good classmates very good college and all these things were plus points for me which made me and developed me and blossomed me into father jose but these people who are taken to the gallows have not been blessed with all these things that is why they have become offenders and they are taken to gallows today is very unfortunate so what he really means is that uh, the circumstances of people make one person either a good human being or a bad human being a law abiding citizen or a uh, law violating citizen that is why the 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 scientific study of criminal behavior is most important so the background of the offender the the causal factors in the home in the environment in which the person was brought up all these things are responsible for making a person uh, what he is today so i would say that uh, we are all very fortunate to have been brought up in good homes affectionate homes by affectionate parents having good teachers in the school 
and having studied in good schools and colleges and having good teachers te professors in the colleges and all these things made us what you are today what i am today but uh, the other on the other side people who have not been blessed like this they have become offenders whom you you curse as uh, dangerous people now when i would i would uh, uh, just some give some glimpses of what because talking what has happened in the last 50 years in an hour is it's extremely difficult so but uh, i thought shall i take about, about half an hour more or so how, how long yes sir you can take sir okay. you can okay. take you can take sir you can take okay very good so immediately at that time when i was uh, 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 a postgraduate student in the madras medical college i think uh, uh, dr sivamurthy was uh, in the first batch i belonged to the second batch and uh, at that time when dr sivamurthy was completing about to complete his the two year course and we were thinking of starting a forum to express our voice and the forum was called we started actually the forum was called criminology and forensic science study circle and that forum was mainly meant for uh, inviting guests lecturers and experts in different field and uh, uh, organize uh, lectures so that the students the young students uh, would be able to listen to them and also develop leadership skills to organize how to write a letter how to get uh, yeah, an expert and how to reply all these are leadership skills so and and uh, that program i was next to dr somurthy was uh, secretary of the first secretary of the criminology and forensic science study circle and secondly after he left uh, i was in the second year and i became the secretary of criminology and forensic science study circle during that time one of one of my teachers and mentors the director of forensic science laboratory he called me one day and he said uh, please come to my house on it was on a sunday and uh, and during that on on that sunday i visited his house and uh, and we were talking for about 2 3 hours he said that uh, we are thinking i said he said i and your professor t shanmugam we had long discussions over a proposal to convert this criminology and forensic science study circle into a national organization uh, to have uh, uh, more members to exchange knowledge to share ideas and findings relating to criminology criminological research uh, and organize uh, conferences and meetings and maybe in the name of indian society of victimology and uh, he asked me my ideas and we had long we had made a, uh, jotted down the points in support of uh, creating an organization called indian society of criminology and within a few weeks the a meeting was convened and in that meeting which was presided over by by one of the teachers in criminal law uh, one mr uh, he was a retired judge mr arul srinivasan i remember arul srinivasan presided over that meeting and the indian society of criminology was created by uh, by the unanimous uh, resolution of that particular meeting and that indian society of criminology was uh, formally inaugurated in a very grand gathering at the senate hall of the university of madras in chennai and you 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 would be surprised that uh, that a indian society of criminology was formally inaugurated in such a great auspicious function which in which uh, the no no less than a person of the stature of the chief minister of tamil nadu at that time mr karunanidhi mr karunanidhi was the chief minister mr karunanidhi chief minister of tamil nadu inaugurated the indian society of criminology on 18th november 1970 and i was the founding secretary of the indian society of criminology still i have the photo the uh, in my in my rack in which i think uh, the uh, mr karunanidhi chief minister and uh, uh, 
the IGF Tamil Nadu, IGF police of Tamil Nadu, Mr. R. Mahadevan, because there was no DGP at that time. He was called IG, IGF police. And then Advocate General Mr. Govind Swaminathan, the number one law officer of the state of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Govind Swaminathan, they are all sitting there. And I was uh, speaking, and that photograph is still with me. It was in 1970, 18th November. 18th November. So it's a very historic uh, moment. Then the you know, then the Indian Society of Criminology uh, was organizing several meetings, scientific meetings, and uh, annual conferences. And almost all cities of the states in India had organized our annual conferences. And I was the secretary, I think, uh, from 1970 to 77. Seven years, I continued as a secretary. Then later, due to my uh, educational commitments, uh, I did not continue. And uh, my successors took it up. And I think uh, uh, Mr. Pichand himself uh, became the secretary. And uh, then other people like Dr. Sivamurthy took it up and it was going on. So Indian Society of Crim Criminology, Madras University and the Department of Criminology and stalwarts like Professor T. Shanmugam and Mr. N. Pichandi, we are all proud that a national society which has grown up like a banyan tree, big banyan tree today in the last 50 years was a uh, was, uh, it germinated in the University of Madras at the Department of Criminology. It's a matter of great pride. I think uh, it gives me immense pride and pleasure that uh, I was associated with the the starting of the Indian Society of Criminology. Then uh, I I started uh, my career in the because there was nothing available unlike uh, the present day opportunities you people have now there are large number of opportunities new colleges are offering new courses on criminology etc new uh, the exploration of new opportunities in different even in the corporate field the need for criminology students in the area of maybe cyber crime etc are needed now all these things are new developments, but those days there was nothing like that. So I, at that time, I was selected by the UPSC and I, I worked for five years in the, the National Institute of Social Defense. And at that time, because of the efforts of Professor T. Shanmugam, a new department was started in the Madras University. And I was very fortunate to be, the, to be selected by a selection committee headed by the, our at that time the vice chancellor of the university of madras with the experts like uh, professor uh, justice i think on, just justice nadrajan of the madras high court who was a mecca high court judge of madras and um, uh, and some other uh, experts uh, they selected me as the uh, first head of the new department of criminology and uh, with with a lot of passion there was nothing in the department that time there was the whole thing for the youngsters like uh, dr michael and dr deepak it must be uh, a, a news that the whole department of criminology was started in only one room there was nothing nothing available and in that one room uh, it was uh, there were two three teachers i was a reader associate professor and head of the department and there were two other teachers assistant professors or lecturers those days they were called as lecturers and these uh, we were all uh, 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 in sitting in the same room and when some visitors for example some very important visitors from outside come they used to go out because my my pew used to stand out he said so and so has come so and then these two people go out and uh, the visitor after the visitors uh, interaction with me is over they the they used to come in and it was like that but that was only for a few months then i fought with the registrar vice chancellor etc and got uh, two more rooms three rooms so that means uh, we had a, a, a exclusive classroom and uh, one room for the faculty members and one exclusive room for the head of the department and my clerk inside the room that was that was how it was started then 
out because of the very hard work in the next four or five years criminology department was very well known in the whole campus chepa campus and in the whole university of madras criminology department was uh, yet yeah, talk of the town because of our work we used to organize several seminars conferences and it came in the newspapers and lot of news items relating to the work of criminology department came and a stage came that whatever we asked for the vice chancellor granted whatever things we asked for the vice chancellors were were happy to grant because of our work usually my work in the department was always from for about 12 hours 9 am to 9 pm we used to i used to be there at 9 o'clock and leave the department at 9 sometimes even 10 o'clock and i remember those days my young research scholars uh, 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 young friend of mine sentil adivan who is no more now who recently passed away he was my first phd scholar and uh, um, Madhavan, Madhavan Soma Sundaram, the professor and head of the department of uh, the Manonvain Sundaram University. He was also my the first PhD student who completed his PhD. And these two people, we used to leave the department mostly after 9 p.m. Around 9.30, 9 9.45, 10 o'clock. So, uh, and all these very hard work gave very rich dividends for the department to to flourish and have national and international importance, international collaborations, etc. <clears throat> and I think another very important, uh, uh, I think, uh, development, uh, I, I would say, uh, significant landmark development, I would say, is uh, the the participation, my participation in the seventh United Nations Congress on the prevention of crime and the treatment of offenders. I do not know whether you are, Michael, your young students know about uh, the UN Congresses on crime prevention, whether you had any occasion to uh, talk to them about this. Now, anyway, I would tell them, those people who are not aware of it, the United Nations Congresses on Pride, Prevention of Crime and Treatment of Offenders is uh, our Congresses, our conferences organized once in five years by the United Nations and hosted by one of the 200, no more than 200 countries of the United Nations, member countries of the United Nations. The participants of the country, uh, the Congress or the UN Congress on Crime Prevention are the governments of the nations. And these Congresses are meant for sharing and exchanging the best practices on crime prevention and the, uh, the sharing of the newly emerging forms of crime you know the crimes are changing the 30 years ago 40 years ago the uh, the cyber crime were not uh, that dangerous now cyber crime economic crimes using digital technology the uh, the, the entire bank account money could be uh, swallowed taken away by a click of the mouse in a computer today if you are little careless so all these things were new developments so the new developments relating to the emergence of crimes new crime new forms of crimes and also the new means to deal with such crimes was dealt by was discussed in the forum called the united nations congress on prevention of crime and treatment of offenders so that was when i was uh, i think 1985 83 the department was started 85 when i i was working in the madras university criminology department the first 84 i think that's an important year because for the first time in india for the first time in india the a three day conference on uh, victimology it is called a regional symposium on victimology was organized by me in the department of criminology and that became a publication later called readings in victimology first paper publication readings in victimology and 
and so we introduced or we took up our for our for our discussion about the concept of victim the need for victim assistance even before the 1985 un declaration you would be astonished that the united nations declaration on the basic principles of justice for victims of crime in 1985 uh, and abuse of power 1985 was was uh, adopted by the UN General Assembly only in 1985. But uh, the Department of Criminology of Madras University organized a victimology three day exclusive victimology three day symposium in 1984, one year before the UN Congress adopted the declaration on victims. So uh, I participated in the United Nations Congress on the invitation of the United Nations uh, uh, as an observer. And that is a very important thing because in that UN Congress only, in that UN Congress only, the declaration of basic principles of justice for victims of crime and abuse of power was uh, adopted by the Congress which was later taken to the General Assembly of the United Nations and which uh, adopted unanimously the declaration. The international instrument which you are studying as the Declaration of Basic Principles of Justice for Victims of Crime and Abuse of Power was uh, 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 in the, uh, adopted by the United Nations General Assembly on 20, 29 November 1985 in the same year. So September 1985, the United Nations Congress uh, endorsed the, and uh, approved the, the declaration consisting of victims of crime and abuse of power. And later, the uh, General Assembly gave assent to the declaration. So that is a very important thing in which a history, in the history of the United Nations Declaration, I was also able to take part in the city of Milan in Italy in the 7th UN Congress. Then uh, I think uh, uh, the World Society of Victimology, my, my association with the World Society of Victimology, which is a, an organization uh, at the international level started in the year 1979 at Germany. Uh, my good friend and uh, senior professor, who is no more now, uh, pro Professor, uh, I think, um, Hans Schneider. Professor Hans Schneider, a, a great figure in the European countries. He has written a large number of books. All his, most of his publications were in German language. Of course, he was an internationally renowned victimologist and criminologist. He was the professor and head of the Department of Criminology at uh, uh, the uh, Munster University in uh, Germany, West Germany. And he and, he, and people like uh, uh, Professor John Dusich, Professor Kirchhoff, all these people, they thought of uh, uh, creating a forum at the world level to, to voice the, uh, the concerns of victims. And the World Society of Victimology was established in the year 1979. At that time, in 1979, I was not associated with the World Society of Victimology because 79, I was only well, I was I was a young lecturer at the National Institute of Social Defense, but um, then after my joining the Madras University from 1985 onwards, that was my first participation in the in the criminology in the uh, victimology uh, symposium. That is, uh, uh, I combined both the the uh, the World Society of Victimology symposium and the United Nations Congress on the prevention of crime and treatment of offenders. That means um, first I participated at the Zagreb, the former Yugoslavia capital, Zagreb city. Afterwards, uh, I took part in the UN Congress at Milan. So since 1985, my association with the World, World Society of Victimology gave me a lot of opportunities to know about victimology, to have interactions and also be, make me familiar with the international developments in the advanced countries like United States of America, Germany, Netherlands, etc. about the conditions of victims and 
I also had the opportunity to get elected to the Executive Committee of the World Society of Victimology from 1991. I used to take part in all the victimology symposia every three years from 1985 to 2018. So once in three years, in all these in different countries, I could participate, and and I was one of the senior most uh, professors in for victimology in uh, in who has helped developing the international victimology through international society, world society of victimology, and that made me thinking why not we also should have a society to to express the concern of victims to voice the problems of victims and we decided to have an indian society of victimology in the year 1992 with the i i still uh, remember the warmest support of uh, people like just uh, mr uh, dr r k raghavan who retired as the director of uh, Central Bureau of Investigation, who was a very good friend of mine. He was a DIG of police, and he used to take classes for our criminology students uh, uh, on police ad administration, investigation, etc. And Mr. Yellen Venkatesan, who passed away just about a year ago. And both of them gave immense support to start the criminal Indian society victimology. Now that has just completed 25 years, Silver Jubilee. So, I am very proud of uh, informing the younger generation that uh, I had been blessed to to be instrumental in starting both the Indian Society of Criminology and later the Indian Society of Victimology. That I consider as a uh, as a real blessing and producing uh, besides uh, encouraging and motivating a large number of students uh, who came for doctoral research and also the students who were working for their master's dissertations to take up issues problems relating to victims and madras university criminology department became a very strong foundation a background for developing victimology so michael said that about uh, about my contribution and my recognition as a victimology uh, a pioneer in victimology in our country that was because of the large number of students who had taken up victimological issues for their research under of course under my guidance and supervision and indian society of victimology also was uh, instrumental in doing several things and uh, um, the the victim assistance uh, the 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 uh, draft victim assistance bill was prepared by Professor Madhav Menon and his students of the National Law University. And we organized a, an expert committee meeting, about 20 experts under the chairmanship of Justice B.R. Krishnayar, a day long. It was held in Hotel Savera, day long from morning to evening, I think from 9 a.m. to evening 5 p.m. Justice Krishnayar was chairing, and many top police officers like like former director mr cb director of cbi mr uh, cb narasimhan mr sm dais and uh, dr rk raghavan mr ellen vakadesan and uh, i think uh, mr nt vanamabali the criminal lawyer the famous criminal lawyer and justice malimath they all took part and we had a uh, threadbare discussion and we uh, we uh, finalized the draft victim assistance bill and we wanted a national level law for victim assistance and victim compensation and all uh, principles which have been enshrined in the united nations declaration of basic principles of justice for victims of crime and abuse of power so later on the now the development is i'm, I'm very happy to share with you that all of you know that uh, 2008 criminal law amendment 2008 so it took how many years 1992 that means uh, eight 16 years the the 2008 criminal law amendment act which said which defined who is a victim for the first time in india indian criminal law and procedural law and victim has been defined and also certain rights have been provided to victims now i'm not going into the details you must have uh, been taught by your teachers or or you'll be taught by your teachers but uh, 
victims have been given some kind of recognition to get access to justice, to get restitution, to get compensation, the state compensation. Section 357A of the Criminal Procedure Code, Code of Criminal Procedure Code, is a, is a very big boost for the victims of crime and abuse of power in India. Nobody would have thought about 15 years ago, 20 years ago, that such a development would have come. Of course, we had convinced the Supreme Court and the several high courts through our repeated voicing for the victims of crime and abuse of power. And once finally, the Supreme Court took up the matter and the state was compelled, the government was compelled to create the law for compensating victims of crime, section 357A was the result. Then uh, I think uh, then the criminology department focused uh, is, as its specialty, the victimology, and many students of mine took up. Uh, for example, I would say, I remember Dr. Madhava Sundaram. He was the first PhD student in victimology, and he completed his PhD research on fear of crime. And that was a wonderful thesis, which was evaluated by the most renowned professor of criminology and the founder, founding president of World Society of Victimology, uh, Professor Hans Schneider of Germany. He only evaluated Dr. Madhav Somasandran's thesis. And uh, we had such uh, wonderful contributions. Then, Uh, then I would I would I would consider uh, my very very uh, important uh, contribution as uh, as uh, the creation of a new department of criminology and criminal justice uh, at the Manon Madhyam Sundar University that was possible uh, because of my vice chancellorship because I could become the vice chancellor. It was possible to create a new department. You know the financial crunch in the education department, education uh, department, and uh, no new department. Even the existing departments that were either closed or number of faculty members were uh, substantially reduced in all uh, universities. So at that time, with uh, uh, with a lot of uh, courage and determination and a passion. Uh, I was able to start the Department of Criminology and Criminal Justice at the Manon Madhyam Sundarar University with uh, faculties like uh, uh, Dr. Madhava Soma Sundaram, Dr. Uh, Bula Shekhar, and now uh, many other people have come, uh, new people have also come, younger generation have come, and they are doing very good work. And uh, I could involve the people like ja, Mr. Sivanti Adityan to contribute uh, to make a building for the Department of Criminology and uh, uh, Criminology and Criminal Justice, and also uh, the Department of Management Studies uh, to, uh, by getting 1.4 crores, 1.4 crores as donation from uh, Sivanti, Mr. Sivanti Adityan for uh, uh, these two departments. And uh, we could get it uh, inaugurated, uh, 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 the new department with a with a, an air-conditioned seminar hall for about 150 people, uh, which is common to both the criminology department and management science department uh, uh, available for conducting programs, etc. Just before about three, four months uh, of uh, my completion of the term as vice chancellor, and in a very grand function we had. And we organized one of our, uh, I think, uh, uh, victimology international conferences in the newly started uh, structure. And the seminar hall uh, we had uh, established at that time. So that was a very interesting uh, contribution, which I could uh, make it. Uh, and. Uh, I think uh, these are some memoirs uh, which uh, I always uh, uh, 
consider that uh, I could I could be instrumental. I, I was one of those people who were participating in creating this monumental measures for the development of criminology. But finally, I would like to tell you that uh, our younger generation is doing extraordinarily well. Now, I mean, I'm amazed. I am really amazed to see people like you, people like uh, Michael, Deepak, and maybe Amruta, and uh, uh, Shanmuga Priya. They are all doing wonderful work. You are all doing wonderful work, taking uh, far taking criminology to the and victimology to the next level, to the next level of development. So I think my my simple advice would be to all of you is uh, to uh, you should have a healthy competition, right? But uh, you should not have jealousy. If you have jealousy, you will not be able to work and contribute at all. Jealousy about others' work. If I had thought uh, somebody as a rival who is a uh, uh, and uh, and uh, thinking how to spoil him or how to reduce him, then I would not be able to progress at all. But on the contrary, if you think that how you will improve yourself how you will excel yourself then you and your rival both of you will grow both of you will grow so if you want the subject of criminology or victimology to grow i would expect i would advise all of you to uh, to to all of you to uh, to aim for excellence i remember the slogan which i created in the Manon Mani of Sundarnath University that excel uh, excel in everything, excel in everything, excellence in everything. Excellence in everything means uh, it, it, it involves the character, integrity and character. If you want to really do good thing, it is not only in education, it is not only in your research, but in every behavior of you, so that uh, the future would remember you. There would be unknown followers of you. People may not uh, may not even uh, meet you every day, but uh, they would remember that even after your time is over, they would remember. Yes, I learned. I still remember the good things I learned from Mr. Pichanti, my teacher. Good things I learned from Professor T. Shanmugam, a person of highest integrity. The Justice Krishna here, a person of highest integrity. Now, all these things uh, will be possible. You are, the younger generation is capable of it. Now, we are sometimes I am not able to catch up with uh, the knowledge which the younger generation has. For example, you are able to operate any gadget so easily. Now, I need the help of all of you. So, but still, the, the uh, desire to learn. Many of my colleagues at that time, in 1992, when I uh, when I wanted to use email, 1992, I remember when I was in Germany, I wanted to send an email uh, to my wife that I reached safely because previously I used to send a letter which will take about 15 days to reach. 15 days to reach to inform that I have reached safely. So that, uh, so it was excitement for me that I could send a mail which would reach in one minute to the Chennai from Germany. So all these things are new knowledge, new technological developments. Now, nobody thought that uh, we would be uh, uh, we would be forced to conduct lectures to talk to the students through computer. I am alone in my room. I am just talking, not uh, uh, in front of the students. Usually, I am used. Normally, I used to have interaction, lot lot of interaction with students. My classes never had uh, uh, one way soliloquy, only one way talking. Always I used to ask students uh, questions. Now we are in a totally different environment. So this has uh, the nature has given a compelling necessity for us to learn the new technology. About one year or one and a half years ago, or two, yeah, before before the 
uh, onset of uh, Corona in March uh, 2020 that I never had uh, such a uh, talk through computer to the students. For the first time, I'm doing only after the Corona. So Corona has given a lot of uh, new new uh, knowledge to operate for us to use. So I, I want all of you to grab this new knowledge and also share this new knowledge. You learn everything thoroughly and share it to your students and you will be remembered by your students very well. And I'm extremely happy that uh, I could talk to uh, hundreds of your students uh, today. So I don't know. I have not accepting a couple of students. I am able to uh, see in the computer. I have not seen all of them. Uh, but uh, I'm so happy that uh, my my talk, uh, my uh, words of uh, uh, words relating to the development of criminology and victimology went to. The, hundreds of students today and i wish all of you very well criminology has a lot of opportunities it was not like uh, my period not like my time so if you work hard if you really want to do something good and uh, you will be wanted there are more and more people wanted in the field of criminology and criminal justice and i wish all of you all the best and finally before i uh, conclude i uh, uh, appreciate uh, the effort of uh, uh, colleagues, Dr. Deepak and Shanmuga Priya. I'm not able to see Shanmuga Priya and uh, Shanmuga Priya and uh, other people uh, who have taken pains to 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 uh, have me with you today and share my experiences as a teacher in my journey as a criminologist and victimologist. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your speech, Professor. Now I request uh, one of two uh, students to uh, speak a few words. Thank you. Good morning, sir. This is Aparna, finally a student. Aparna, I am not you. you. You have put off your video. Yeah, uh, dear yeah. students, when you are speaking, please turn on your camera. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes, now, now yeah. I am able to see you. Yeah. yeah. Yes, Aparina. Yes, sir. First of all, thanks, sir, for accept accepting the invitation and delivering us the lecture. Uh, this is a great honor for us sir, to be a part of this uh, lecture. It was very inspiring and motivating for us to hear out your experiences and contributions in the field of victimology as well as in criminology, sir. Uh, once again, thank you for your for your valuable words, and uh, surely our uh, students will take up your words and work hard to excel in everything, sir. Very good. I am so happy to hear that. Thank yeah. you, sir. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Anybody, anybody who want to speak, or you want, if you want to ask anything to professor, you can ask. Any faculties, any faculty members, or any students? Sir, uh, can I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sir, so good morning, sir. Uh, sorry, I couldn't switch on the camera because of network issue. Who is speaking? Uh, have... Introduce Shandu yourself. Shandu Priya, sir. Shandu ah, okay, Priya, okay. sir. I'm one of the okay, faculty. Okay, okay. Sir, I have a question, sir. Hmm. So, do you think there is a necessity for criminology and victimology to be codified to make it as a part of judicial decisions or at least be included in the jurisprudence of law? The question is not fully heard. Can you please repeat it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you think there hmm. is a necessity for uh, criminology and victimology to be codified to make it as a part of judicial decisions or at least be included in the jurisprudence of law? Ah, for this question, about uh, 25, 30 years ago, the subject of victimology was totally unknown to the criminal justice officials. Due to the efforts of Indian Society of Victimology, we wrote to the National Judicial Academy. National Judicial Academy came only recently, but National Police Academy at Hyderabad. And uh, I think with the 
consistent efforts of the Indian Society of Victimology and people like Justice B. R. Krishna here, Dr. R. K. Raghavan, we were able to convince the police academy to have some modules in victimology for the benefit of the young IPS officers who were trained in the National Police Academy and also in the uh, in-service training programs, seminars, etc., for the middle-level officers like DIGs of police, etc. Now, the, even the National Judicial Academy at Bhopal, they invited me a couple of years ago. They invited invited me to talk to the judges of the high courts all over the country to on the the role of victim and the the importance of the the uh, caring for the victim and and the the legal requirements to be improved for the benefit of victims so i went there i was it was a very interesting sharing and i fully agree with you that uh, the knowledge of criminology and victimology would be very useful for the judicial officers particularly at the lower level even for the lower level not only at the higher level because the lower level judicial officers if they were able to understand the scientific criminology the causation of crime uh, very well naturally they are dealing with an offender the disposal of a particular case Awarding a particular type of punishment which is suitable for an individual would all be possible if they were exposed to the modern trends of criminology. For example, I would say that probation is a very important alternative which would be a very useful medicine for the first time offenders, for the offenders who are not dangerous to a society, who are not a danger to society. Now, if the judges are not aware of that, if the judges are not convinced of that, they would never use probation as an important alternative to the punishment of imprisonment. So I agree with you, Shanmugapriya, that uh, the knowledge of criminology and victimology are very, very useful to the judiciary. But things are changing. Now, Supreme, Courts, Supreme Court judges are aware of it. High Court judges are aware of it. So, a lot of judge, judgments, the high, Supreme Court verdicts and High Court verdicts are relating to uh, a better treatment for victims, relating to the, the need for compensation. For example, the need for special care for rape victims. Now, these were all the recent developments in the last 20 to 30 years. I think uh, is the, the journey has to go, go like this and more and more uh, judicial officers have to be enlightened about uh, the, uh, the, the utility, the usefulness of the scientific knowledge of criminology and victimology. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Thank you so much, sir. sir. It was indeed an inspirational speech by you, sir. It is uh, inspirational not, uh, not just to the students' community, but also to us as well. Thank you for sharing the nuances of the subject, your depth of understanding of criminology and victimology. Your enthusiasm is undoubtedly contagious, and we humbly hope to at least partially comply to it by following your footsteps, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Shandu. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. So now I request uh, the student body, uh, uh, Mr. Karish, to propose the formal vote of thanks. Yes, sir. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm Bharadwaj from second year. Uh, I, on behalf of the Department of Criminology and Police Administration, DG Vaishnav College, and on my own behalf, extend my hearty vote of thanks to our distinguished speaker, Professor Dr. K. Chokalingam. Chairperson of the Executive Council at Rajiv Gandhi National Institute of Youth Development and former Vice Chancellor of Manohar Mahim Sundaranar University for enlightening us by sharing his knowledge on uh, his inspiring journey as a criminologist and victimologist. I would like to acknowledge our gratitude to Dr. Chokalingam for establishing the department where we are now and for exposing his experience with us. I'm pretty sure the precious knowledge that we gained today will definitely help us forever. It was an inspiration to all of us, sir. I thank our principal, Dr. Santosh Babu, 
for giving permission to organize the lecture series on crime and criminal justice. Our HOD, Dr. Amruta Karel, Dr. Michael Vallon, uh, Dr. Deepak Essay, and Ms. Shanmugapriyanan for organizing the session. Once again, I would like to thank Dr. Chokalingam for taking out time from his busy schedule and enlightening us with his life experience. Uh, last but not the least, I would like to end my speech expressing my sincere thanks to all the fellow students present here for paying your attention and learning, ultimately making the webinar session a successful one. Thank you. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you so much, Professor. For thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you so thank much, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yeah, students, I, you can leave the meeting. Yes, sir, you can leave the meeting, sir. Okay. Thank okay. you, Professor. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir. Professor. Thank you very much. Thank you, so sir. Sir, hello. Yeah, yes, Gautam. Sir, I have a question, sir. Yeah, okay, please. Who is talking? Gautam. 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 Sir, Gautam. I am Gautam Kumar from third year, sir. Okay, Gautam Kumar, tell me. Sir, uh, since the role of criminologist is uh, in the field of uh, data collection about the crime, sir, but uh, when it taking to the policy making, what are the challenges faced by the criminologist and the policy makers, sir? What are the challenges faced by the criminologist in policy making, sir? Actually, policy makers are not scientists, not experts. You know, our legislators make policies, you know, in the state level, the legislature and the national level parliament. So I would give the best example that how much we had to struggle for the last 30 years to have something, some provisions relating to uh, the improvement of conditions of victims of crime in India. Though we had succeeded partially with the courts because the courts are manned by the very knowledgeable, enlightened judicial officers, particularly at the highest courts like the Supreme Court and High Courts. So they were able to uh, um, uh, equip themselves or uh, learn the new developments in the field. And they quote sometimes they quote in their judgment also. I think last time uh, Dr. Bajpai was mentioning about uh, the usage, more and more usage of criminology people in by the courts, by the judges. By, for example, Delhi High Court judges asked him to be a amicus courier in some matters. Amicus courier is an important officer of the court to it's a it's a big status uh, to help the court with the expert knowledge to help the court with the expert knowledge so only people like you people criminology people who have done research who have found authentic uh, results of their research to convey you have a responsibility and duty to convey it but it is not that easy i would like to tell you you have the main question which you asked is if i understand correctly that uh, the policy makers the challenges uh, of uh, the, the the people researchers in convincing the policy makers it is not that easy it is not it is extremely difficult because their priority is something different the policy makers or the parliamentarians or the legislators, they for them, uh, giving compensation to victims of crime is the least priority or bottommost priority when compared to giving 25 kilos of rice to every household. Do you remember that? So they may, they because this is not giving, improving the conditions of victims of crime is not going to increase their vote bank. That will not increase their vote bank. Whereas, if they, if somebody gives a washing machine to every household, that will increase their vote bank. So you have to be careful. That uh, uh, you have to be careful, but at the same time, you have to be uh, 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 you have to understand the challenge of it and continue efforts. Continue your efforts, just like we have taken efforts uh, and ultimately succeeded in bringing some change in the in the uh, conditions of victims after 
2008 criminal procedure court amendment so my answer in a nutshell is there are a lot of challenges if you want to really translate your research findings into action by the policy makers it has taken several decades for the the united nations to accept i, I would like to uh, recapitulate in the year 1955 the the um, the instrument a yeah, international instrument called united nations uh, 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 instrument for the uh, treatment of offenders Treatment the for the United offenders. Nations standard minimum rules for treatment. Ah, of United Nations. Yes, thank you uh, to re remind me. United UN standard minimum rules for the treatment of offenders was passed by 1955. Offenders were given certain rights, but even at the time, victims were forgotten. Victims were not given any rights. But it had taken 30 years more. 1955, 1985. Only in 1985, the Magna Carta, the so-called Magna Carta, that means a law which has given as a savior to the victims of crime was passed by the United Nations General Assembly. So my, my dear young friend, that there are a lot of challenges, but you should not lose heart. You should not give up, but you should continue. And maybe one day, because about 50 years ago, when I started my career in criminology, I never imagined that there would be a lot of developments like this. But now it has happened. So like that, after 10 years, after 20 years, you will see much more developments. But you should, you should have perseverance and patience. Patience and perseverance. Thank you so Do you much, agree sir. with me? You have any other question? No, sir. We are winding up the program. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much for answering the question. Yes, sir. Now we can leave. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Students, you can leave. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yes. Uh, dear students. Yes, sir. I'll be, I'll be I'll be sharing the link again in the WhatsApp group. Or uh, if you have the link already, I have started accepting response. I will do that now itself. So you can start filling the attendance form. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.